Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. Uh, this one, because a lot of people have asked about my water bases, so this is not a 3D printing video. It's what to do once you've 3D printed something and you want to paint it up. So we're going to be looking at how to make uh, this water base today. And hopefully, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, it also has a nice gloss finish. This one doesn't have the gloss finish yet. But I'm going to show you how to paint your water today to make it look like on these bases, which everyone seems to think uh, came out pretty decent. And it's so easy, we're going to do it with just a couple things. We're going to use Rust-Oleum Chalked uh, Primer. This is a little thick. I wouldn't use it on my minis because it does come through a little thick, but on terrain pieces like this where the detail is kind of big, uh, it works great. It gives us such a nice smooth finish, which is uh, good for the technique I'm going to use today, which is uh, overbrushing and dry brushing. And then, believe it or not, all we're going to do is we're going to use not expensive paints. I'm not going to use my Games Workshop or my Vallejo paints. They're too expensive when I'm doing a terrain base. I don't need to do it, it's gonna look just as good. I'm gonna use Artist Loft Blue, and I'm gonna use Artist Loft White, and that primer, and that's all we're gonna to use uh, to paint the bases like this. Uh, the rocks obviously are a different color, but that, that's also quite easy. We're just gonna focus on the water today. So without any further ado, uh, what I'm gonna do is, and I'm not gonna show this in the video, I'm gonna go out and spray. I have another version of the base unpainted, I printed out. So I'm gonna go out and spray that with my Rust-Oleum Chalked, and then when the video picks up, in a few seconds for you, half hour for me, it's gonna pick up with the base already primed. I don't think you need to see me spray the base, it's pretty simply just spray it till it's all covered. All right, so I'll be back in a few, and we're gonna start painting these bases up, and we're gonna make some pretty cool looking base, water base here that you can be really proud to drop on your table, thanks. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention when I did that little intro is, uh, because the figure going on top of this base is actually very light, it's a hollowed out model, um, I'm actually just going to secure it with the glue. Normally, if it was heavy, I would pin it to the base. Since I'm securing with the glue, I don't want the glue to be stuck to paint, which could break off. So I actually just took some painter's tape and I taped uh, the area where I'm going to glue the next part on. So I don't want that to be covered with paint, actually. So didn't want to forget to tell you that. So tape over that area carefully. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to make sure there's enough uh, unprimed area so that so when the glue goes on the next figure, plastic will be melting to plastic with the glue, not to paint, which could then break off pretty easily. So now stay tuned because I'm coming back to paint this in a few seconds. Okay, so here you see it's been primed. Nice, evenly smooth. Just sprayed it for a couple seconds. Okay. I'm not going to take off the tape part yet because uh, when I'm dry brushing, if I hit that area, I don't want to get paint on it, so I'll peel that off at the end. Um, the rocks, on the other one I did, I painted them a kind of like a brown and then dry brushed white over it. Um, I don't feel like they set apart enough from the barnacles, so this time I'm, I'm going to leave them black and just do a gray highlights on them to make it look like black whetstone, and that way when I do the barnacles, this bone color, they'll, they'll pop out a lot more. So, like I said, we're just going to use just these two paints right here. Brilliant Blue Artist Loft. This was like on sale at Michael's. I think it was maybe $3, maybe less. Um, I had a coupon. Michael's always has coupons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dump some in there. Probably too much. Okay. And then... I'm going to, so you see I just put a, not too much in there. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need the white also. So I'm just going to squeeze white next to it. Okay. That's probably too much of both, but just to be safe since I'm making the video, I want to have it in there. Then I'm just using a big brush that I dry brush with. So as you dry brush enough, you destroy the brush. So this is a this is not an expensive brush. It is a Royal and Lang nickel uh, that I, I think I also got at Michael's on sale. Again, with coupons, you can get stuff that's so cheap there, right? And I'm sure every country has a similar type of store. So what I'm going to do to start is um, let me get a paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to dip my brush into the blue, not too heavy, just the just the very tip. I'm then going to take my paper towel and make sure I don't want to get all of it off because I want some color. See, it's, it's a little more than dry brushing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
kind of hit everywhere with this blue. Now, I'm making sure that when I get to the recesses, I'm not pressing it, forcing it down into the recesses so hard, because I want those to maybe get a hint of blue, but mostly stay this dark charcoal you see. But I do want to get, except for the very bottoms of the recesses, I do want to get, I don't want to just get just the tops with this blue. I want to, because the water needs a bluish color. So now that there's almost no paint on the brush, now I'm pushing it a little harder because it's not going to deposit much paint down there. But I want to, I want a couple spots to stay this almost total black, and then I want the rest of it to have very light blue over that black, so it's a very, very, very dark blue. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that brush back in, get a little on the tip, get it on there. And what I do to test, which most people don't like to do, they probably wear gloves, test it here when most of the paint's off. I'm ready to go back in. Okay. You see now, already, that blue is starting to come through. Because I'm not really dry brushing right now, this is more called an overbrush, meaning I have more paint on the brush. Paint is actually, the brush is not dry, it's actually still a tiny little bit wet. But you don't have too much paint on it. So that's, that's what we call an overbrush technique, I believe. Different people might have different names for it, but um, I've always called it overbrushing. That's what I learned. Okay, so now, believe it or not, this hasn't been sped up right. So it's been maybe two, three minutes, and the ba <laughs> we're getting there. You, know, you see the, the blue on the top. Look how light the highlights are already, and I haven't mixed any white in yet. So if you really want to be pro about this, you probably want to mix this blue maybe with a few drops of black at first to keep to keep the highlights not too strong in the beginning even. So now I'm just going back over all the same spots. It's okay if you get a little on the rocks because um, it's very little. And when I dry brush that with a, a light gray, um, it'll wash out. If there's any blue there, I'm sure it'll get picked up. Worst case, I can always go back and touch up if I had to. So I want to get make sure I'm getting all the edges here. Right, because that's all that's all water. It's gonna need highlights so it pops out. So I'm just going around making sure I get all those little ridges and edges. Okay. And to me now it's already looking pretty good. It's been only a couple minutes of work, two, three minutes, maybe I'm not keeping track exactly, but it's very quick. I'll keep talking, but I might be speeding the video up so you don't have to watch me do this for too long. Again, I dipped in a little bit. Wanna Get most of the paint off. And this time I'm getting into those edges a little bit. Make sure I get all the edges by the rocks because that's where there should be some real highlights there. And I'm going to make sure I get some of these deeper parts. I want to make sure I get some, some of this blue in there so that it's not just black. I want a few spots to be black, but I want most of it to be this blue barely covering the black so it's looks like a very, very dark blue. So I'm actually going into those crevices a little bit. You can see I kept a lot of the areas in those crevices are black, right? And I've tried to hit all the ridges, of course, pick up the blue, but I'm trying to hit the areas that lead up to the ridges a little bit, a little bit, so that just so that, you know, there's blue leading up. You don't want just, if I keep highlighting the same spots, in the end, it's just going to be the highest highlight. This blue won't show anywhere. So I need to get blue into some of the other areas that are not quite the top parts, but are raised up a little bit. So where the water's rising up. So let me do that blue again. I have a couple more little spots. See, I'm keeping a decent amount of paint on the brush. You can see the brush is kind of still a little wet. So it's not really a dry brush technique. Even though I told people I did this mostly with dry brushing, I guess technically got this over brushing in here. All right, now it's really picking up the blue. Okay, blue's really showing through nicely. So what I want to do now is, and I want to make sure I do only leave a few spots of the black and get most of it, at least dark blue mixed with that black so that when I start highlighting, it'll pop. And I'd like to think I'm like Bob Ross, except he starts out slow and then this stuff's just amazing and I'm unfortunately not actually talented. I'm just, you see, I'm just slapping this on like a monkey. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, and you see I used way too much blue, I'm almost done with the blue. So now I'm taking a little bit of white on the brush, 
I'm bringing it up here with a little bit of the blue. It's, look how light that is though. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to get, try to get most of the paint off. A little more off than before. So look, it's, it's almost dry. Now I'm going to lightly go and hit really only the highest points. And look at this nice highlight it's given us already. Now this one is much closer to being an actual dry brush because you saw I wiped off most of the paint because here I want to make sure I'm really, really only depositing a little bit of paint on kind of the highest points. So I think that's, I think that's actually doing it. Again, a little white, a little bit of the blue, get it on my hand, get most of the paint off. And then let's let's bring that highlight up. There we go. Now it's now those high points are starting to look like breaking water, right? Hopefully. This one here I'm doing is is breaking really high. Um, because of that. I want to make sure that I really get a lot of uh, highlights onto that because that would that should be the you would think that'd be the lightest looking piece of water would be right there and maybe right here where, wherever it's breaking on the rocks I feel like it should be light so this time I'm gonna do the white just the white because it's still blue on the brush as you can see and I'm gonna get most of the paint off. Now I'm going to look for the spots that I think are the, really the highest spots and just start hitting those a little more. So now I'm not just hitting everywhere. I'm actually looking for the spots I think would have the most break on them, the highest highlights. And now that most of the paint's gone, now I'm going to just now now I'll start to hit everywhere to just make it look like it's the water's frothing. Right, you need white in there for for it to look frothy. So, starting to come alive the water. And when it's all done, I'm not going to do this step because I don't do it until I'm basically done with the base. You just uh, paint on or spray on a, um, a high gloss varnish. Uh, usually I finish things with a matte finish spray, of course, because you don't want it to shine. But this, you want the water to look wet. So you want it to be nice and shiny when you're done, right? So now, it's been only about sure five six minutes maybe seven eight minutes and this thing's almost done All right you've got some really nice looking water and I just keep very lightly brushing this on now I want to get more white so I'm, I'm overloading the brush and then wiping it off on my paper towel because I, I want to try to get a little of the blue out I want to be this to be almost white so I keep playing with it on my hand not white enough for me so I'm going back into just the white Paint my hand some more. Better my hand than the model. Okay, now I think it's mostly white. So I'm gonna get mo almost, look. See how almost no paint's on my hand? When there's no, almost no paint on my hand, there's still some paint coming off on the brush though. So now, again, try to pick out the highest points. This is easy to do. You look at your model, whatever the highest points are, hit them with more white. Do a little more white. Until it's almost done. This this little wave area here looks like it really should. And if you if you do a little too much, you can actually just go back with your finger and just. I like I like that effect actually. Let me get this side. It looks neglected. That should be almost all white there. Okay. This peak right here is sticking up pretty high, so let's make sure that jumps out. And in the back here, let's give it a little more. Okay, guys, this is this is basically done. So, just a very simple overbrush technique into a dry brush technique. Um, you don't have to do it that carefully because, look, I I wasn't even that careful. I got a little bit on the rocks here, but now when I dry brush that with a very light gray, also then going to white, you won't see that there was blue here. So even with this big brush, and I'm not that good an artist, obviously. Um, 
just being a little careful, I, I don't even think I hit the rocks that much. And then you can always play. Like you, some people, if you want to, I mean, I know a lot of the real artists, they actually end up with white, white at the end. I'm not even getting there. But why not? Let's, let's, let's play with making some of these high points even whiter. Right? Just make it a more dramatic. Because remember, you're looking at it pretty close up on the table, maybe a few feet away. Um, the sharper those contrasts, you know, the, the, just the better they jump out at you when you're looking on the table. So let's just keep going with this white and just getting this look. So I think right now, as far as water parts, I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm ready to call this done. Hopefully you guys agree. And again, I'm not, I'm not out here saying I'm a great pa painter. I'm just trying to help people who are like me who aren't great painters uh, to try and get really good results using really super uh, simple techniques that I've learned. And you get something you can do really fast and slap on your tabletop and people go, oh, wow, you know, from far away, especially they say, man, that looks amazing. You know, maybe they pick it up and they go, yeah, you're not that good a painter. But until they actually pick it up, you know, it does look pretty good, I think. So, you can see I kind of missed back here a little bit, so I'll just go back over it. But yeah, I think that's basically it. So I might make another video. I guess when I go to paint the rocks, although that doesn't seem like it'd be a very exciting video to me, maybe I should do it um, just to show you guys how I, how I finish it off. That actually takes me a lot longer just because the barnacles and the shell, I actually have to paint those carefully with a small brush. So it probably takes me as long, just as long to do the barnacles and the shell as all the rest of the stuff combined, because that's actually, you know, fine detail work that I'm not very good at. So I have to like go slow and get the magnifiers out and all that stuff. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope uh, you'll, you'll take this technique and go make a nice water base. And again, since it only takes you hopefully like me less than half an hour. Uh, and then normally what I would do is have this gloss uv varnish right it's windsor newton artist acrylic and if i i would either spray on the gloss or if it's something like this uh and i had the model on it already i might want to paint it on so i just get it where i want to i might not want to spray but that gloss makes this base look like this so now you see it looks wet and what i did was i painted the uh from here down with the gloss, although it doesn't come out that shiny. I hope it's picking it up. Um, I'm gonna do another layer of the gloss because I want all this to look like the water just receded around this uh, statue. But hopefully you can see. So once I paint this gloss onto here, you get this totally wet, pretty cool looking wet effect uh, on the model. And again, I'm gonna do another layer here because I really want that to look shiny and wet. Like the water's just pulled back from it. I think it's a pretty cool looking effect. Uh, and so the rocks here and here and the barnacles I'm going to do like I did here. So I'm going to do this gray uh, with a white dry brush and a light gray dry brush. And then the barnacles uh, kind of like a bone color. And it's probably hard to tell. Oops. Probably hard to tell. But what I did on the seashell, I did a white with like a tiniest little drop of pink mixed in. So it looks a little pinker than everything else. Just makes the shell, the shells uh, pop out a little bit in person. I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera like that. But anyway, so that's that's the end result you're gonna get if you use the techniques we just use right here. And you use this on, uh, I use the exact same technique on a small base because uh, I have, aside from the big monster that goes on this base, I have a mermaid that goes on this one. So I gave her a base, hers is a little darker because it's small, so I, did, I left it a little darker with, with bright highlights. So hopefully that'll look good when I finish painting her up and stick her on. And that's it. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Uh, I'll be doing some more painting videos, and all my painting videos are going to be like this one. It's all going to be very simple techniques, all things that you can do very quickly. Uh, and a lot of it's going to involve dry brushing and over brushing, because that's the easiest, fastest techniques, especially for um, you know non-professional painters like me. And... That's actually what I used to paint this this dragon. Um, and maybe I, you know, it's much the same technique as I used here. So I don't think I need to make a tutorial on the dragon. But you can see it's something you can put to use on a lot of different types of, of models out there. 
and uh, it works pretty well. So anyway, that's it. Please like, please subscribe, please stay tuned in the future for uh, some more painting videos. Thanks.